Hey everyone, in this video I'm going through five different things that artists are doing wrong, which hinders them from becoming a good artist and decent human beings as well. But before we continue, I wanted to let you know that I have over a hundred painting lessons available for you on my Patreon site, in which I teach you my techniques step by step. Just follow the link in the video description to join me on Patreon and get access to over a hundred full-length painting lessons. The first thing that comes to mind is being in it for the wrong reasons. I know so many artists and wannabe artists that are in it because the mere thought of being perceived as an artist by their friends, family, the internet, the public is the best thing that they could ever imagine happening. They dream of being shown in galleries and museums all over the world, becoming famous, making lots of money in the meantime and living a fantastic and adventurous lifestyle. Who wouldn't love to be as successful as Banksy, James, Jean or Monet? But unfortunately, for the majority of people, this dream just never comes true. To have this much success, it not only takes extraordinarily well-developed art skills, but you also have to be a genius business person, being willing to sacrifice more than other people would, and on top of that, being incredibly lucky. I don't mean to say that you can't achieve a career like that, but be prepared that this might always stay a fantasy. Therefore, if you are in it for the right reasons from the start, you can save yourself lots of frustration and disappointments. If you like creating art pieces that fulfill you and make your time worthwhile, and you even manage to make a living out of it, which is, by the way, not a necessity to be an artist, you can be very proud of yourself and enjoy the fact that you are contributing to our culture in a meaningful way. The next thing on my list is not staying true to yourself. Once you have made contact with other artists, agents, gallerists or wealthy clients, it's easy to adapt and fulfill the expectations they have of you, because you want to be part of this exclusive clique. For example, you dress differently because you want to fit in, or you think you have to, and start doing things to increase your chances of success. However, as good as that might be from the salesperson's perspective, this is an act that you are playing, that is not your real personality. People are not blind and they will notice at some point if you are doing it just to get their sympathies and attention. Some people are not pretending to be someone else on purpose, but because they are insecure, they don't know what else they should do. Everyone likes authenticity and honesty. If your personality is outgoing and wild, by all means go for it. But if you are an introvert and a bit shy, that's fine too. Don't try to be someone else. Relax and be yourself. Let's move on to the next one. You have no right to criticize me or I don't want to hear unsolicited criticism. Have you heard that phrase before? Or maybe even said that yourself? Well, I certainly have and I feel the pain every time a critique hits one of my sore spots. It turns out that artists in general have the most feeble of minds, that crumble under the pressure of a harmless critique that is not totally positive about their art. Well, we need to get over that, guys. Because negative critique is the best way to get better. Of course, you should not do random things that people on the internet or your family say that you should do if you think it's total nonsense. But if you get constructive criticism that has actual merit, coming from an expert in your field, it's worth gold and even more. Therefore, although it may hurt, try to use this valuable piece of knowledge to become as excellent as your role models. It's not a weakness to admit the flaws in your own creations. In fact, talking about them and pointing them out will open your eyes and help you avoid doing the same mistakes over and over again. I don't say it's easy, but it's worth the struggle. That being said, if your skin doesn't grow thicker than a certain point, it helps to let your expert friends know that you like them to use the sandwich method if possible when critiquing. They should say something that they like about your work, add the critique and then finish with something nice again. You can try that too. This way the critique doesn't feel as harsh anymore. Not everyone is able to do that though or can even understand why you feel hurt. So just have that in mind. This one is common, I believe. You don't do art if you don't feel motivated. Well, the truth is, for the sake of our mental health, we need to do art even if we don't feel like it, and here is why. 
The problem with not doing stuff you intended to do, be it art or something else, is that it puts you into a toxic mindset. Once you have decided to not do art, you might now, where you suddenly got time at hand, procrastinate instead and your lack of motivation spills over to the rest of the day, which can make you feel bad about yourself. Instead of feeling relief that you don't have to do this thing you didn't want to do, you might now feel as if you had in fact let yourself down. You see, it's a sort of downward spiral and can grow into a habit that can leave you with a serious art block. It doesn't have to work like that for everyone, but I noticed this behavior with my own psyche and observing it helped me tremendously to overcome any lack of motivation. So for the sake of our mental health, I believe we need to do the things, especially if you don't feel like doing them. Therefore, what I recommend you do, if you are not motivated, is that you apply a bit of discipline on yourself and do a sketch or a drawing even if you don't feel like it. And oftentimes, midway through the process, you might observe that your motivation suddenly comes back and you will feel very inspired. And if your artwork sucks at the end, don't let your motivation slip away so easily. You can be proud now, you know, because you can relish the fact that you pulled yourself together and that you were productive through the sheer force of your mind and not some external influences you have no control over. And last but not least, this one applies to artists and creatives that want to become professionals. So you dream that you too will become successful one day and the universe will make things work for you. Well, unfortunately, this is not how reality works for most of us. You can't be a dreamer, but on the positive side, you have more control than you think. Become a business person and learn how to market your art. Be smart about what you're investing your time in. And if you put all your effort into a project, the odds are it will work out for you somehow. So make a plan, set yourself goals and stick to them. Learn everything you need to know. Today we have all the knowledge of the world at our hands and all we need is a little time and effort. So guys, these are some of the things that I feel many artists and me included have been doing wrong at some point in our careers. And I hope with this video, I could help you avoid doing them. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section and give it a thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you in the next one. Bye bye.